Good morning, everybody, and thanks for joining us on this Friday, June 1st. I'm Eric Crosswhite. And I'm Scott Martin. It's hard to believe it's already June. Goodness, goodness. Well, for the first time in 18 years, a senior North Korean official will be at the White House. A top aide to Kim Jong-un is delivering a letter to President Trump. It's a reciprocal message to one the president sent to Kim last month. CBS's Laura Podesta has details. So I look forward to seeing what's in the letter, but... Uh, it's very important to them. A senior North Korean official will hand deliver a letter from Kim Jong Un to President Trump at the White House today. Kim Yong Chul, North Korea's 72 year old former spy chief, has spent the past two days meeting with Secretary of State Mike Pompeo in New York. They've been trying to get the June 12th nuclear summit back on track. Our two countries face a pivotal moment in our relationship in which it could be nothing short of tragic to let this opportunity go to waste. Besides being a sign of progress toward the summit, a White House visit will be a propaganda win for North Korea. The last such meeting was in 2000 during the Clinton presidency. President Trump seemed optimistic. Hopefully we'll have a meeting on the 12th that's going along very well, but I want it to be meaningful. It doesn't mean it gets all done at one meeting. Maybe you have to have a second or a third, and maybe we'll have none. Meanwhile, tensions between North and South Korea continue to thaw. The countries resumed senior level talks today in a border village. They discussed how to provide a positive environment for the summit. Laura Podesta, CBS News, New York. Pompeo said among the sticking points holding up the summit is how willing and serious North Korea is on complete denuclearization. Your first alert forecast with meteorologist Jacob Dickey. Well, we're watching a few scattered showers and storms on the board here. They are fine, pushing mostly out of our area, seeing that last little complex from Amory, just east of Smithville now, into Detroit, Alabama, Hamilton, and Hackleburg towards Haleyville. As these showers carry out in the next hour, I think we'll be having a little dry time, but our eyes are still off to the north and to the west. Some more strong storms approaching I-40 between Memphis and Jackson with some large hail and some gusty winds. And then from Searcy, Arkansas, we'll have to see if those storms make it in our direction over the next couple of hours. We'll keep the chance for scattered showers and storms through the day. Better chances into the afternoon and evening as those temperatures for us are heading into the 90s, maybe upper 80s if we got some of that rain this morning. Futurecast shows some continuing scattered showers and storms. Best chance along US 278, maybe down into the Golden Triangle area along US 82. As we go into Saturday then, more pop-up showers and storms can be expected, but Saturday night, we're keeping our eyes in some stronger storms here as they roll on through. Could have some gusty winds, but some drier air is behind them. Coming up, I'll tell you more about the seven day forecast, and we've got some nice weather. We've got those details in a bit. Looking forward to that. Thank you very much, Jacob. Well, California is the first state to begin selling digital license plates today through a handful of auto dealerships. And Chris Martinez shows us what these so called smart plates can do and the convenience that comes at a cost. And it like, kind of goes with the color of the truck and everything, so I went with this. Auto enthusiast Tommy Rizai is one of the first testers of the R plate, a digital license plate that aims to connect in today's high tech world. I'm an early adopter with a lot of things, and I thought, hey, why not? Let's uh, give this a shot. I thought it was cool. Beyond the cool factor, stolen feature. Neville Boston says his invention can display urgent messages, like if the car is stolen, or share details of an Amber Alert, and no more trips to the DMV. Simplifying registration. That's what we were looking to do. It's just simplify the registration process. Companies and agencies managing large fleets may be willing to pay for the convenience. The device costs nearly $700 with a $7 monthly fee. Sacramento and the Arizona Department of Transportation are testing the plates on some of its vehicles. The state owns the number, you own the plate. Boston says the company has already pre sold 10,000 plates in California under a two year pilot program. Right now, it's also legal in Florida, Texas, and Arizona with more states on the horizon. We're going to have a pilot in Nevada and Pennsylvania and Maryland. Drivers are alerted if someone tries to steal the two pound device. A built in GPS keeps tabs on its location. Through an app, users can add their own DMV approved backgrounds or add customized messages and pay tolls and parking. Eventually, ads may be allowed when the car is stopped. It's something unique that it's a conversation starter. But for drivers like Rizai, it's one more way of customizing his ride and standing out. Chris Martinez, CBS News, Los Angeles. Now, the company says the plates are also being tested in Dubai. Some critics have raised privacy concerns, but the company says all tracking information is stored on the plate and only the user can turn it on. If it'll save me a trip to the DMV, I'm all for oh, it. Oh, yeah.
Well, on a lighter note, it's okay to embrace your inner Homer Simpson. It's National Donut Day. Yay! It's a cel the celebration <laughs> for the sugary snack is always held on the first Friday of June. <laughs> <laughs> and it's also used to raise funds for charitable organizations. <laughs> Most donut stores usually offer free donuts in honor of the day. Yay, National <laughs> Donut Day has <laughs> been around since 1938. It was established by the Chicago Salvation Army to bring in funds during the Great Depression, as well to honor Salvation Army volunteers during World War One. So a little bit of history and some laughs there for you. How yeah. about donuts? Grab a cup of coffee, grab a donut, and wake up with these faces. With us. You're, you're gonna get a laugh, I'm sure, <laughs> obviously. And that leads us to our sunrise question of the day. What, where is your favorite place to grab a donut and what do you order? All right, we got some responses here. Uh, David says his aunt makes homemade fried apple pies. You can't beat them. Um, do we get those fried apple donuts or the, the fritters too? Fritters. Fritters. Yeah. Apple fritters. fritters. I yeah. saw that fritters. I thought that was cool. And then uh, mm -hmm. Sandra's is Connie's chicken and Tupelo. They got a blueberry donut. I gotta go try that, and I gotta go say hi to Miss uh, Diane. For a second, I thought it was like Connie, like a chicken blueberry donut oh. at first. I was like a little scared. You know, I've had <laughs> blueberry coffee. Blueberry Strange coffee. Strange brew. Interesting. Starkville. Do they have Hertz donuts here? I haven't been long enough. I haven't seen our oh, Hertz Oh, I donut. love Hertz donuts, Ooh, but Hertz I don't think donuts. they're around here. They were really popular in Missouri, but I always thought they were more like cupcakes than actual mm -hmm. donuts. Yeah, they're because fancy. They put so much and icing not, and boy, stuff boy. on them. I got some good ones. Lots Missing to choose from. Very yeah. true. Well, it is 6.07. Stay with us. We've got more sunrise coming up right after the break. Welcome back to Sunrise. Now to a reminder of the sacrifices military families make. It's the story of a daddy's little girl. Jeff Glor reports. While stationed overseas, U.S. Army Specialist Chris Harris received the best news from his wife, Britt. A special handmade onesie that said, Chris, you're going to be a dad. One week later, the father-to-be was killed when a suicide bomber attacked his convoy. Since he wouldn't be with his daughter in person for the many milestones in her life, Chris's wife turned to what her late husband considered his extended family, his army brothers. My boy Harris, you know we're going to do it for him. We're going to see what kind of baby he's going to have. She sent to Afghanistan confetti for the family to take part in the gender reveal. Three, two, one. 
It was a girl. Chris Harris's family seemed as excited as any parent would be. Named after her dad, Christian Michelle Harris was born in March, the same day Chris's brothers returned from their tour of duty. Chris, you got your baby girl. And the brothers saw for themselves when they were included in a photo shoot with the baby. In one stunning image, they form a circle with their palms in the center, Christian looking up. They cradle her just as their brother would. In this picture, Christian wears another onesie. My daddy, my hero. Some powerful images. Well, next on Sunrise, Jacob will have an update on our forecast. And later, protecting the streets two wheels at a time. How new officers on motorcycles are keeping Columbus streets safer. That and much more still to come. You're watching Sunrise. Your first alert forecast with meteorologist Jacob Dickey. Thanks for joining us this morning on Sunrise. We've had a little showers and storms move through parts of the area this morning. Dry in Columbus, downtown Louisville, Mississippi, Vernon, Alabama. Too blow though, we did get some rain earlier. Really off to the east here, you can see some of those showers and storms pushing into Itawamba, Monroe County, and off into West Alabama. Here's where they are now. Here, the very end of the line is east of Hatley, north of Gatman. There, coming into the northern Lamar counties. Here's Marion County, so Hamilton getting some showers and perhaps a few rumbles of thunder off towards Haleyville. Eventually, that'll be heading towards Guin and Brilliant and off into uh, the Birmingham market. So we'll be finished with the showers for a little while. More showers and storms are behind them, though, watching to our north from Jackson, Tennessee, towards Memphis, and then off towards Little Rock, seeing a few more showers and storms in the board. Some of those, again, had some gusty winds and some small hail with them as they will be pushing in our direction over the next couple of hours. Temperatures this morning are starting off in the 60s where we had rain, so that's in Corinth and Iuka and Tupelo where we've not gotten any rain, muggy, and in the 70s we're at 75 in West Point, 73 in Starkville, Louisville, checking in at 72 for the day. As we get into the afternoon, lunchtime, into the upper 80s, many of us into those low 90s. The heat index 
be into the triple digits at times here. A little cooler off to the north, we get that rain in here, but still 88 in Tupelo, be muggy out there. 89 in Fulton, 88 in Boonville, 91 in Aberdeen. Down in West Alabama, we've got 91 in Fayette, Vernon, Soligent, Reform, and Aliceville. Chance for some scattered showers and storms in the afternoon. And then in the Golden Triangle, we'll put it 92 in Columbus and Macon, 91 Starkville and Ackerman, Winona, 89, Grenada, 90 for our high today on Friday. Here's future cast showing some of those storms moving in our direction. This keeps us rather dry through much of the afternoon, but tonight then pops up a few showers and storms for us. And one of our in-house models also showing the chance for a few scattered showers and storms through the day on Friday, continuing into Saturday before a cold front approaches our area. That then will bring a chance for some more strong storms overnight Saturday into Sunday. Seven-day forecast keeps those chances for showers and storms on through Sunday morning. After that, Sunday afternoon, some drier air works in. We get those lows at night into the 60s. It will not be all that bad as we get the upper 80s on Monday. Hey, very good morning to you. Hope you're having a great start to your Friday. It's time to go to work. The road to Omaha begins today for 64 college baseball programs around the country. Three teams from the Magnolia State playing in a regional, but only one team is hosting. You know who that is. The number four national C. That's the Ole Miss Rebels. They had the early practice on a Thursday. They continue preparations on facing St. Louis and their ace pitcher Miller Hogan. Now we learned on Thursday Tyler Keenan will be good to go for the regional, but Greg Kessinger still iffy with his hamstring injury he suffered in Hoover. Now the focus for the Rebels has been defeating the Billikins, moving on to the next challenge in the regional. But the excitement that's building in Oxford has the team eager to play at Swayze on a Friday night. It's awesome. It's a, it's a special feeling being able to play at home uh, in front of the home crowd. You know, it's, it's a big deal for us, so uh, we're really excited about it. It's huge. You know, um, two years ago we were here. I uh, didn't get the job done, but it's, it's good to be back, and it, it's going to be exciting. We're expecting a big crowd. Um, you can tell just the, the buzz around the city is, um, you know, everybody's you know, ready for the baseball game. So, you know, really uh, nothing really changes, though. You know, the crowd might be bigger, but um, we're going to stay within ourselves and, you know, just do what we do best, and that's, you know, show up and play our game. I think for the city, uh, it's a baseball city. You know, the people really enjoy the games and, of course, great atmosphere here. And, uh, so anytime you play postseason here, I think it's a, it's a treat for everybody. But certainly I think it's a reward for our guys. You know, great season, uh, one that, you know, they deserve to, to be here at home and, and play in front of this great crowd. For Tallahassee and in Tallahassee for Mississippi State, they are gearing up for an uphill climb where they'll have to beat eventually probably Florida State. They will play Oklahoma in their first game, though. The Bulldogs, as you know, a pretty young team for the most part, but Gary Henderson says he's not deviating from his original plan and how he's motivating getting his team ready for the Sooners. I haven't said anything specific to, to the young guys, anything other than how you address the club, you know, and... Uh, um, we played really well down the down the stretch, and I, I think you just look at it as a reward for playing well. I don't make it bigger than it is. It's a it's a great opportunity to to test yourself. Uh, it's a reward for playing well. I think that's really important that the kids look at, at it like that. You know, they're getting rewarded for playing well through the course of uh, an SEC uh, season. If you're Mississippi State, you're expecting to be in the postseason. That's kind of that comes with the territory, and I think the kids sign up for that experience in the recruiting process, and and uh, hopefully we play well. But that's the expectation. Bulldogs and Sooners will start 11 a.m. You can watch the game on ESPNU. Following that, LSU will take on the Aztecs of San Diego State. 6:30 p.m. tonight, Ole Miss will take on St. Louis. You can watch the game on the SEC Network if you're a Southern Miss fan. You can catch the Golden Eagles taking on Dallas Baptist. That'll be an online-only game on ESPN3.com. Got to go to watch ESPN to find it there. That's where you'll find the Golden Eagles. Auburn playing at a 1 p.m. on a Friday. Also, keep an eye on Northwestern State. Uh, they have a kid by the name of Sam Taylor on their team, who's a former New Hope Trojan. They're actually playing in that same regional as LSU. They're playing Oregon State in the first game. So, just something to monitor and watch as we continue to keep an eye on our area players playing in the NCAA tournament, along with DJ Sanders with Oregon in the Women's College World Series. Hey, speaking of Women's College World Series and softball, former East Webster Lady Wolverine Bailey Springfield made it official on a Thursday as she signed to continue her softball career at Southern Miss. Springfield's sophomore season at ICC was off the charts on the circle. She boasted a 20-5 record pitching with a 1.54 ERA to go along with 123 strikeouts. The MACJC Pitcher of the Year eager to take her talents to the D1 level. I just feel like the coaches are really down to earth. You know, they made me feel at home every time I went to visit. Um, 
I love all the girls. The coaching staff is amazing, and I just like the way they're building their program. Bailey came here and has just uh, been exceptional for us all year. And you're glad to see a kid, you know, with all the hard work she's put in for it to pay off with a Division One scholarship. Just a big day for her and her family, and uh, a big day for ICC softball. Hey, who's ready for football season? We have the 60 Schools in 60 Days Marathon coming up soon, but we also have college football just around the corner. SEC Media Days coming up soon. Well, we have our early season schedule set for Mississippi State, Ole Miss, Alabama, our SEC schools. The Bulldogs will start their opening game at home against Stephen F. Austin at 6.30 p.m. on a Saturday night, September 1st. The game will be on ESPNU. Following week, they'll go up to Manhattan, Kansas for an 11 a.m. game against the Wildcats. Could be a sleepy trap game for the Bulldogs against K-State. And then after that weekend, they'll come home to take on the Raging Cajuns at 6.30 p.m. And the Egg Bowl, by the way, is all set for 6.30 on a Thursday night, Thanksgiving night, against Ole Miss. That game will be at Vaught-Hemingway Stadium this year. For Ole Miss, their first game of the year will be in Houston, Texas, a neutral site game. For, for all intents and purposes, it's a road game against Texas Tech. They'll play that game at uh, NRG Stadium in Houston, Texas. Following week, they'll be back home to take on the Salukis of Southern Illinois at 3 p.m. kickoff time. And then big one with Alabama will be at home in Oxford this year, third game of the year. It'll be a 6 p.m. kickoff time on ESPN. Uh, Bama, as you know by now, their first game of the year, that 7 o'clock game is, is a neutral site game. Then 2.30 will be their second game of the year at home. So before you know it, we'll have college football here. We'll be talking about football on the gridiron once again, which is always a good thing. One more note for you, former Mississippi State quarterback John Bond expected to be named the head football coach at Madison St. Joe's later today, according to T.J. Wary at WJTV in Jackson. It will be Bond's first coaching job since he was a GA at MSU with Jackie Sherrill in the late 1990s. That is all for sports for now here on Sunrise. We'll recap all of the baseball coming up tonight. We hope you have a great rest of your morning and a great weekend. WCBI coverage of the NCAA Baseball Tournament, Oxford and Tallahassee Regionals, is brought to you by Bank First Financial, a better way to bank. OCH Regional Medical Center, Advanced Medicine, Compassionate Care. And Bill Cunningham, Attorney and Counselor at Law.
Good morning. Welcome to Get Fit Friday. I'm Beth Jeffers with Whitney Brown, and we are at the Fitness Factor today. And last two weeks, we've been talking about training. One was personal training, which is one on one training. The second one we talked about was small group training, and that's when you have three to four clients. And today we're going to talk with a newer, in, newer concept that's in the fitness industry called team training, and we offer it here at the Fitness Factor. So Whitney, and you know, this is a more affordable, definitely, uh, type of training. Take us through a kind of a team training gr group class at the Fitness Factor. Well, the first thing we do in any team training is that we gather everybody as a group. Because there's a lot of participants with one trainer, what we do is we like to introduce ourselves so that anybody that's new feels very welcome and that we're all pretty clear on who's in the group and who we'll be working with. After that, what I like to do is explain the concept of what type of training we're doing. We have some training scenarios that are more metabolic and they're more conditioning type um, workouts. We have things that are more strength based. We have things that are more active recovery days. And so I really like to give a clear picture of what the participant is trying to, is going to expect that day. And then I go through every single station, every single exercise, showing modifications, showing ways to make it harder and make it easier so that everybody feels comfortable when they get to that station, they know exactly what to do for their fitness level and you know what's great about team training this is where that social aspect comes in you have the camaraderie of other people working together and the great thing is is that you're under the guidance of a Absolutely. personal trainer a trainer that's made the workout for you you don't have to reinvent the wheel and you know that you're going to get results from that Absolutely. It's a really fun way. It's the dynamic is fun, the music is loud, the energy is there. And so what we like to do in team training is to make sure that everybody feels welcome. And even if you're not used to group scenarios or you might be a little intimidated in a large group scenario, try it out. You know, just get your feet wet. Sometimes the hardest thing is to just join the group and get yourself started. Right. If you're interested in trying a team training class, give us a call at the Fitness Factor and try something new this week. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next week on Get Fit Friday. For more Get Fit Fridays, go to WCBI.com. Mic check. Testing one, two, three, two, one, 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 two.
Welcome back to Sunrise. My guest this morning is Dr. Montrell Green, one of the organizers of the Mississippi State Youth Conference. Dr. Green, thank you for being here this morning. Thank you, Eric. So glad to be here. Tell us a little bit about this conference. What all do you have planned? Well, we have, this is a 26th annual Mississippi State Youth Conference. This is a conference that empowers and engages youth from all over the state of Mississippi. Um, and we're going to be here Friday, Saturday, and Sunday in this great city. We're going to be housed on the campus of MUW. And most of the events, the three events that I want to talk about today, will be open for the public. And that's going to be in Rent Hall. I think some people call it Whitfield, but <laughs> Rent Hall. We've been having a little bit of a debate uh, this morning. <laughs> right. So at any rate, uh, on that Friday night, we, we're going to have a, an opening convocation of sorts. And uh, it's going to start at 7.30 um, p.m. And um, we're going to have a good devotion. Uh, all, of the, all of the youth from across the state of Mississippi will be doing type of roll calls from whatever city they're from. Um, and then we're going to go and have a powerful message for our young people. Uh, the theme this year is going to be CrossFit. And so this is a religious organization, uh, Mississippi State Youth Conference. It's based um, out of the Churches of Christ. And the concept was that we're going to empower our youth in these challenging times to be the best that they can be and to be equipped to deal with all of the challenging things that they have to deal with. So the theme is CrossFit and it comes out of Hebrews chapter 12 and 11, uh, or rather chapter 12, and it just deals with this concept of running your race, being the best that you can be. So again, on that Friday night, there will be a powerful message, message that deals with that theme. And on the Saturday, there's a $10 charge, but it is well worth it because it's going to be a glorious pageant. There's going to be some powerful youth going to be addressing uh, the crowd over in Red Hall, uh, and, and they're going to be on the theme. Uh, we're going to have a, uh, 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 another type presentation for entertainment, and we're going to have a major choir to perform. And uh, they tell me that I'm going to have the opportunity <laughs> to speak. Um, I'm going to motivate the youth. Uh, I've been an educator for a long time, been a superintendent for three different school districts, but I've also been a um, motivational speaker. And so one of the things that I'm going to do is try to re really reach out to those youth. We're going to be rapping and singing, <laughs> and, but the concept is going to be how do you best uh, be the person that you're created to be in this challenging world. Awesome. So much going on. Really quickly, you want to touch on that, that last uh, thing that you're inviting the, the public to? Absolutely. Um, so to wrap up, it's going to be Friday, 7.30. Rent Hall, Saturday, uh, 7 o'clock, Rent Hall, $10 charge, and Sunday morning worship is going to start <laughs> at, I <laughs> apologize. That's all right. That's all right. We won't it's going to, right, really. It's going to start at 9 a.m., okay. and that'll be the last session. It's going to be an hour and 30 minutes, but it's going to be power packed, and the youth will have a good time again, empowering and engaging our youth. We want all of our, uh, all of the youth here in this city to come out and be blessed. Uh, it'll be well worth it, I can assure you. I know you guys have put a lot of planning into this. I hope yeah. you guys have a, a good turnout. We appreciate the opportunity to come on. You bet. Dr. Green, thanks for being here. God bless you. Let's send it over to Jacob with another check on our forecast. Hey, thanks, Eric. We're watching our SkyCam network this morning across the area. Mostly cloudy skies in some spots, some partly cloudy skies. Looking at Tupelo, we can see these showers and storms that have left off to the east there. You can see the darker skies, but some sunshine peeking in there at 69 to start our day. Dew point at 66. Here's those last of the showers. Now, it's in Marion County, Alabama, into northern Huntsville and uh, off into Tennessee. Watching a few more showers and storms off into Arkansas and Tennessee, north of Memphis. I think our future cast does a good job showing them drift off through the delta, and we get a few pop up storms through the day and through the evening tonight in our area. For many of us, though, we will stay dry. The best chance to see some storms is in the Tupelo area. Highs in the upper 80s to low 90s. Tupelo, we are at 88 and then seeing 90 in Amory in West Alabama. We go from 90 in Hamilton, 91 in Vernon, 91 in Aliceville, and then in the Golden Triangle will be in the 90s here. We see 90 in Winona, 92 Columbus, 93 Macon, Louisville at 92 also. Chance for a strong storm expected here through the weekend through Sunday morning really for gusty winds and some large hail with that. Seven-day forecast keeps the chance for storms after Sunday morning a lot lower. We get some drier air in place and we'll be expecting that to uh, be a little more pleasant weather next week compared to what we've been seeing. Time now for our sketch the sky. Our first sketch brought to you by Maggie today. Thanks to Maggie for sending this photo in. Really nice picture there. If you'd like to send in your sketches, you can send them into WCBI Sketch the Sky, P.O. Box 271, Columbus, Mississippi, or email them to us, weather at WCBI.com. Thanks, Maggie, for sending in this sketch. And the weather quiz question of the day, it's a Friday. We've just 
had a Friday moment, I guess. Hurricanes are rated according to intensity on what scale? This question brought to you by Spiller Furniture and Mattress. Is it the Fujita scale, the Stafford Simpson scale, or the Beaufort scale? We'll have more sunrise coming up here in just a bit. Sketch the Sky is brought to you by Pediatric Dentistry of Columbus with Dr. David K. Curtis and Dr. Katie Curtis Windham. Welcome back to Sunrise. It is 638. If you live in Columbus, you've probably seen the new motorcycle officers riding around town. It's been several years since a motorcycle unit was part of the police department, but now it's back with two officers cruising to make a difference. Our Jory Tally has more on how this unit is making the community and roads safer. To ride one of these, you need two things. One, specialized training, and two, a love for the job. Glenn Jenkins has been in law enforcement for nearly two decades, but he's only been a motorcycle officer for less than six months. It was a natural fit. His passion is traffic patrol, and he's been cruising on two wheels since he was a kid. I've got a passion for riding a motorcycle, and so if you put two together, and you know, it's just a, um, it's, it's a blessing mm -hmm. that I'm able to uh, serve the community on something that not only that you love to do but you're on something that you love to run. Speeding is something locals have been complaining about to the Columbus Police Department. A young man was caught coming 
south on South Lindbergh at over 90 mile an hour. And that's a 40 mile an hour zone. And he entered the intersection of Lindbergh and 182 right there at that high rate of speed. Officer Jenkins works 12 hour shifts and writes anywhere from 25 to 30 tickets when he's out spotting speeders. His bike is equipped with full digital radar on the front and rear. The case shows 48 right there. One behind him is 40. Over 70 and a 35 on Tuscaloosa Drive. And then that, that, of course, is a two lane road. Um, and one thing about the motorcycle, we're able to radar, uh, we're able to turn around on a dime to get to stop the vehicle. And not only just for, to do that, but for their safety as well. Since the motorcycle unit hit the streets, the problem has slowed down. They're not as highly visible as a police car, so they can fit into different places. So you never know where they are. So people are more apt to uh, pay attention to the speed limit, pay attention to what they're doing, and keep uh, keep things the way they, they should be instead of just speeding through the area. Although the bike unit has caught a lot of speeders, officers say they're not chasing anything but safety. They're not picking on anybody. They're not trying to raise any revenue. We're not trying to make money for the city. We're trying to improve the safety for the citizens of Columbus, Mississippi. That was our Jory Tally reporting, and Jenkins says the motorcycles can get to the scene of an accident faster, provide more funeral escorts, and also do other specialized events. They also use less gas. They'll be watching out, that's for sure. With well, technology advancements is helping save firefighters' lives after research shows an increase in firefighters being diagnosed with cancer. At Columbus Fire and Rescue, after each scene, bunker gear is thrown into a special washer and dryer to remove toxins that may have gotten on the gear. There's also two practices they have in place to help decontaminate, a wet decon and dry decon. Now, the situation they respond to depends on which type of decontamination they use. Assistant Fire Chief Dwayne Hughes says with the way homes are being built today, after years of exposure to what's burning inside, those toxins can have deadly consequences. It's the unknown, uh, the things that we're actually exposing ourselves to and, and to our crew members to these cancer-causing agents that uh, not only we're experiencing on scene, that we're bringing back to our firehouse. Columbus Fire also wipes down their uniforms after a fire scene before getting back in the truck and back to the station to prevent cross-contamination. The department says it will stay proactive when it comes to health and safety for its crew. The Thursday was World No Tobacco Day, a day to take a 24-hour breather from tobacco products. The number of adults and kids lighting up has been on a steady decline, but it's still above the national average. Programs targeting children have helped prevent teens from picking up tobacco products. Many local communities have created smoke-free ordinances, and researchers found those policies have come with a bonus. We started doing these things to protect non-smokers, and one of the happy um, unintended consequences was that adult smokers would try to quit because they became denormalized and inconvenient to smoke. And adolescents and young adults were less likely to initiate because, you know, it's 85 degrees, 90 degrees outside right now. To go outside to smoke a cigarette when you're out at a bar is a lot different than just accepting a cigarette at the bar. McMillan says there are many programs in Mississippi that can help people quit smoking. We have links to some of those on our website, WCBI.com. A Golden Triangle group celebrates Mental Health Awareness Day. The CAN system of care put on the event at Probst Park. CAN stands for Connect and Inspire. Four different counties partnered up for health and hope following trauma. It's an annual event, and its goal is to help promote, raise money, and have a good time with kids. The time now is 6.44. Stay with us. Jacob will have another look at our weekend forecast when we come back.
Test, test. Test, test. Good. Your first alert forecast with meteorologist Jacob Dickey. Starting off our day with quite a bit of cloud cover across many of our areas. Columbus, Louisville, Tupelo, and Vernon seeing that. Had some heavy showers in Tupelo area. Those are rolling just north of Vernon, but Vernon definitely seeing some clouds there. Down in downtown Louisville, Mississippi, a bit of a hazy sky this morning. We are at 71, dew point at 70, and light winds mean some of those low clouds. Maybe some light fog in spots, but not expecting that to be anything significant. Here's those showers that have moved off to the east now. They're moving into southeastern Marion County. Out of our area, no longer a concern. Some more showers and storms off to our north. We'll have to keep our eyes on them as they move in our direction. But our future cast keeps them along and west of I-55 and keeps our area mostly dry during the day. We may get a few more pop-up showers and storms as we head into the afternoon. Starting off the day into the upper 60s where we got some of that rain in the low to mid 70s where we've stayed dry. Columbus at 74, 72 in Hamilton, 67 in Iuka. Through the afternoon, those temperatures head for the 90s for many of us here by 4 p.m. 92 with some passing showers and storms expected in the area. Now, most of us, I think, will stay dry, but we keep the chances on the board as those heat index values approach the triple digits. Here's our forecast for Tupelo, 88, 90 in Amory, 91 in Aberdeen, seeing Water Valley at 89, and then in the West Alabama, 90 in Hamilton, 91 in Lamar County, and in Pickens County, and then in the Golden Triangle, we'll put Columbus at 92, 93, in Macon, 92 in Ackerman, Kosciuszko, and Louisville for our Friday afternoon high. Now, the future cast also shows those showers off to the west dissipating. Notice here, into the afternoon, we get a few pop-up showers and storms, mostly along and north of US 278. I think that the Tupelo region will have the best chance in maybe parts of North Alabama to see some of those pop-up showers and storms. Now, through Sunday morning, we'll have to keep our eyes for some stronger storms here. The biggest threat will be gusty winds in excess of 60 miles an hour. We could get some hail in there and perhaps some locally heavy downpours out of any of these showers and storms. A slight risk of severe weather exists for Fayette County, Alabama. Areas along and to the east of really Solzhen and Vernon can't rule out a strong storm in the Golden Triangle. And then as we head into our Saturday, then really Saturday night, seeing the chance for some strong storms off to our north and west. Late Saturday night into Sunday morning, expecting to see some of those strong storms move our way. We'll keep the temperatures very warm through Sunday. Sunday afternoon, things dry off. A cold front pushes on through. We get some nicer weather in Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Time now to answer our weather quiz question here. We have talked about hurricanes since today is the first day of hurricane season. Which scale is the hurricane? rated by? Is it Fujita, Stafford Simpson, or Beaufort scale? Stafford Simpson scale is the scale we use to have hurricanes. The Fujita scale, tornadoes, and the Beaufort scale is wind.
Well, welcome back, everyone. In the studio with us now, Russell Snap here talking to us. That's a big event going on tonight down at the Magnolia Motor Speedway. Russell, what do you guys have going on tonight? We've got the uh, special event tonight, uh, Fast Friday. Uh, the USCS uh, group is bringing them in. It's a series of winged outlaw sprint car racing. And um, this is going to be their sixth night. We've been sitting here talking about... Yeah. How uh, their series. This will be the sixth yeah, night. That's a lot of racing. A lot yeah. of racing. Last night they raced at Talladega. Uh, we've got an appearance with Seamus Wendell coming in. He's a three-time World of Outlaw champion and uh, five-time Chili Bowl champion. Uh, so they're coming in tonight to race with the uh, we race with us here at the Magnolia Motor Speedway. So that's gonna be a good time for sure. And here's some video of what yeah. people, just kind of giving people a taste of exactly. what they're gonna be able to see tonight. You were talking a little bit about Sammy Swindell. He was at Talladega last night? He actually last night. He actually won, won last the event night. last night. That's exactly right. Um, in the top five, there was Tony Stewart. Uh, all these guys travel with that series, so uh, it's very. Um, again, they'll probably come here tonight, and uh, it's going to be a good event. These guys are making about 13 second lap times. Whether you're a sports fan of any type, if you followed racing or you don't follow racing, this is one you don't want to miss. Yeah, it's definitely something to enjoy. Can you talk to me a little bit about the uh, about the series? Do you guys always bring this here each year? It was here earlier this year in March. Okay. Uh, Tony Stewart won that event earlier this year in March, and they usually appear with us twice a year. It's a point system, so these drivers chase the points, and uh, a good, good prize money and exciting racing. Hey, you had everybody wants that prize money, That's right? right? <laughs> now this all starts tonight at seven thirty. Now people that want to come out, what time do they need to be there? Is anything Gates open tonight at four thirty for the grandstand. So okay. bring That's out the early, lawn chairs, so. bring your lawn chairs, spot, get your spot reserved, and uh, the racing starts at seven thirty. Now, how exciting is this? I mean, you were talking about thirteen. Uh, a lap in 13 right. seconds. Exactly. That's fast. How, That's extremely talk about a little fast. Bit about the adrenaline that people <clears throat> might feel. Well, it's, feel it's a, a wing sprint, as the clip showed, and uh, these guys are just sharing small real estate. You know, getting around. The mm -hmm. nickname of the of the Magnolia is the Black Ice, uh, and, and again, 13 seconds is a quick lap. Ooh, that 24 is pretty cars. scary. All right. Well, Russell, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. This morning, we appreciate it. Again, gates open. You said at 4:30, right? 4:30. Gates open at 4:30 at the Magnolia Motor Speedway. Racing starts at 7:30. For more information, there's that number and website there on your screen. Thanks again, Russell. And thank stay you. Stay with us. We'll be right back with more. Thank you.
Well, we are wrapping things up here on Sunrise, but before we go, we want to take a last look at your responses to the Sunrise question of the day. Where is your favorite place to get a donut, and what do you order? It is National Donut Day. So, uh, Tanya says Krispy Kreme, she gets the raspberry fill, and then Laura, she <laughs> my, That's my mom. Hang on. Shout out to my mom. <laughs> is that really? I did yeah, not realize that. Yeah, it is. That. That's wow, my mom right there. All says, donuts everywhere. And I agree with her. It's really hard to mess up a donut. You know, people, yeah. my, my favorite yeah. thing is people will be like, oh, I don't want a donut. I'm not hungry. It's like, what does that have to do with it? Exactly. Have a donut. Well, you can always have a donut. Most of the time, they're pretty light, too, so they're yeah. not even that yeah. feeling. I could eat a whole box in like That's 30 deceiving, seconds. though. There's still a ton of calories. Also, yeah. Lisa Klutz of West Point, if she's, she loves donuts. I actually texted her this morning to let her know it's National Donut Day. So, Lisa, if you're watching, go get yourself a donut and enjoy. And even if anybody out there is on a diet or something, I feel like National Donut Day, you deserve to have a little bit of a break. Reward yourself. Yeah. Also, it's the start of the weekend. Calories don't count, ladies, okay? Exactly. That, that's. Just some <laughs> advice. That's Scott's <laughs> rule. Calories exactly. don't matter on Fridays. Nobody has All to worry weekend. about it. All weekend. All <laughs> weekend. They don't. Friday evenings, Saturdays, and Sundays. The calories what about don't you count. guys? When you're craving donuts, where do you guys go? Uh, let me talk, well, Krispy Kreme, okay. obviously. I do love me some Krispy Kremes, but my favorite place, there's a place called Momo's in Sherman, Texas. Amazing. Really? You can That's go to amazing. Casey's General Store. It's a gas station up kind of in the Midwest region where I'm from. They got the best donuts. They got the best pizza, too. Mm. Can't, can't beat Sounds it. I'm a big good. fan of Shipley's. That's Shipley's is good, too. <laughs> All right. Thank you for beginning your morning with us here on Sunrise. We'll be on the CW4 in a couple of seconds.